Good evening and welcome to Thursdays with NAMI. My name is Peg Morrison. I'll be your host tonight. I am the Assistant Director of NAMI North Carolina. That's the National Alliance on Mental Illness North Carolina, and I'm glad y'all are here. Thursdays with NAMI is our way of building conversations and building community around the topic of mental health and related disabilities or different abilities. In the past, we've talked a lot about loneliness and isolation. I've certainly experienced it. And unfortunately, it goes hand in hand with mental health challenges. If I have a mental illness, so many barriers can come up. Maybe it's social anxiety, agoraphobia, fear of leaving the home, fear of being judged because people are afraid of words like schizophrenia or psychosis. And sometimes there's an extra layer of difficulty. For most of us, the physical act of talking is easy enough. We don't think about forming words and making them come out of our mouths. How do folks communicate when they cannot rely on speech? What does that do to our ability to connect with others? Maybe there are neural pathways in the brain that are injured. Um, so the brain can't tell the lips and tongue what to do. Maybe there's another issue. Our guests tonight have been there and they're going to share their lived experience. All of them are users and advocates of augmentative and alternative, alternative communication. In other words, they use technology to help with communication. We'll be getting the whole story from them in just a moment. As usual, the first part of our show will be an interview with our guests. Partway through, we'll show an interview of the week, of, I'm sorry, a video of the week, and then we'll spend time taking questions from you, members of our virtual studio audience on Facebook Live and Zoom. First, a word from our sponsors. Thursdays with NAMI is funded in part by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services Division of Mental Health, Developmental Disabilities and Substance Use Services through the Federal Community Mental Health Block Grant Fund. We appreciate their guidance and their support. Uh, now, without further ado, our guests tonight are Chris Klein, Lance McElmore, and Stephanie Fazoff. Lance, did I say your last name correctly? Yes. <laughs> oh, hooray. I'm going to pat myself on the back. Um, Chris began using AAC, again, that's augmentative and alternative communication, at age six. It opened doors for Chris to be mainstreamed in school, which ultimately led to his earning a degree in kinesiology from Hope College and a master's from Western Theological Seminary. Lance has been using AAC for 12 years. He is an ambassador for the Center for AAC and Autism. He holds a bachelor's in studio art and philosophy from the University of Alabama at Huntsville. Studio art and philosophy, you must have some interesting things to talk about, uh, all of you really. Stephanie is the founder of AAC Peer Support. Uh, we love peer support at NAMI. She holds a master's in communications from San Jose State University and is working on a second in mental health counseling. Welcome all of you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. It's great to see everyone. Um, and so we always like to know the background of our guests. If you could just tell us about yourselves in a nutshell, uh, maybe we could start with Chris and put Stephanie in the middle and end with Lance this time. Um, me. Baby up five. So I grew up in a big family. They decided to tea. R E A treat me like everybody else 
So I wasn't really tried different and we made things work so I've done a lot of things that most people haven't done and really that is why I am the person I am today. I am the baby of five, so I grew up in a big family. They decided to treat me like everybody else, so I wasn't really different, and we made things work. So I've done a lot of things that most people haven't done. And really, that is why I am the person I am today. That's wonderful. I'm the I'm the baby of six. So I know that place. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie. As you know, my name is Stephanie. I have earned my bachelor's degree and master's degree in communication studies at San Jose State University. My master's degree project was on individuals with significant mobility and communicative differences and their autonomy, independence, and sense of self. I am currently a court-appointed special advocate and educational rights holder for an older youth with complex developmental needs. Also, I am a part of an Nick Davis Research Advisory Committee about healthcare inclusion for individuals who have developmental differing needs. I am a peer counselor for those with AAC needs, as my organization is called AAC Peer Support, empowering individuals to find their voice. I aim to be solution-focused, strength-based, and goal-oriented while sharing strategies and skills that I have used to cope and process life's challenges. I will be earning a second master's degree in mental health counseling to become a mental health counselor and child, couple, and family therapist. I was formerly a volunteer in two classes for students with complex physical and communicative differing abilities for 10 years. I live in Sacramento, California, with my wife, our sassy cat, and food-obsessed dog. My passion is to help people with mental health needs, so I am focusing in my second master's degree to become a mental health counselor and marriage and family therapist. I have complex PTSD. Many people with complex PTSD, like me, may have chronic mistrust and shame, emotional flashbacks, nightmares, somatic memories, hyperarousal, hypervigilance, severe anxiety, emotion dysregulation, and low sense of self and emotional autonomy. I've been working with my own mental health because my wife and I are planning on having a family soon and our future children deserve the mentally healthiest parents and plot, psychotherapy and psychiatric medications are gifts from Christ. Wonderful. I love the advocacy. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, you pack a lot into a couple minutes there. Uh, you and I have some things in common, including the food obsessed dog and some trauma, it sounds like. So thank you for being here. It's lovely to meet you. I would say that my upbringing was not that special. I would say that my upbringing was not that special. Mm. I have a sister and I grew up in a small town and I went to school 
like everybody else and I had a few special head glasses here and there. I have a sister and I grew up in a small town and I went to school like everybody else and I had a few special ed classes here and there. I started to gradually lose my speech when I was about 11 and nobody knows exactly why mm. i started to gradually lose my speech when i was about 11 and nobody knows exactly why mm. wow i went to mm. university and i <coughs> graduated with honors by not having a communication system most of the time I was there. I went to university and I graduated with honors despite not having a communication system most of the time I was there. Mm. Now I work as an ambassador for PRC and the Center for AAC and Autism. And I try to advocate for other AAC user users in the hopes that it will make them have an easier time getting through the world than I had. Now I work as an ambassador for PRC and the Center for AAC and Autism and I try to advocate for other AAC users in the hopes that it will make them have an easier time getting through the world than I had. Great. Well, congratulations to all of you. You've all accomplished a great deal and uh, come through it with a determination to do some good in the world. And I give you so much credit for that. Uh, Lance, I went to Kent State and my friends somehow I ended up hanging out with philosophy majors all the time and a couple art majors. They were the smartest bloody people I'd ever met. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I don't know how I managed to get in with them, but uh, really, really <laughs> nice, smart people. Um, yeah. So uh, each of you has accomplished a lot. What are you most proud of? And I guess we can go in the same order if that's okay with you. Oh, so, um, on I hate talking about myself. I feel that I need to do more. And yes, I am. P R O U proud that I have done on A T E D talk. Oh. I have spoken around the world, but just 
just feel like there is more works work to do and that is why I am starting a new organize organization we want to help people with there someplace s t r struggle struggles but also e q u i equip them to go out and help other others so i am working on setting that up also working on a book oh come on I hate talking about myself. I feel that I need to do more. And yes, I am proud that I have done TED Talk. I have spoken around the world, but just feel like there is more work to do. And that is why I'm starting a new organization. We want to help people with their struggles, but also equip them to go out and help others. So I am working on setting it up. Also working on a book. Yeah. All right. Well, you've just got a couple things on your plate. Um, yeah, I'm. I think it's wonderful. Uh, a book is such a big project, and I understand how you feel. The work of an advocate is never done. Um, but it sounds like you're making some wonderful strides, Stephanie. I am proud of my second master's degree in counseling because I feel so passionate to help people who have mental health needs. I am proud of my second master's degree in counseling because I feel so passionate to help people who have mental health needs. Right on. And again, that's an area where there's just so much demand and getting culturally competent care can be difficult. So it's wonderful that you'll be there to have an understanding of trauma, to have an understanding of different abilities and the isolation that can happen when communication is uh, kind of interrupted for whatever reason, because there are a lot of things that can come between two people or, or a person in the world and, and get that feeling of connection and intimacy that we all need. Yeah. Yes, 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 most definitely. Lance. This probably will sound like a small thing, but I was most proud when I got my first job, which it took a lot longer than most people. This probably will sound like a small thing, but I was most proud when I got my first job, which took a lot longer than most people. I think I was about three one when I got my first job. I think I was about 31 when I got my first job. Oh, that's a big step. 
I don't really hear that as a small step. I hear that as a big step because there's just so much that goes into holding a job and being accountable to other people, being on quote unquote for whatever length of time. And I know for me in my recovery, it's it's given me structure, it's given me challenges, a feeling of connection and identity. So I definitely get that as a big step, Lance. Absolutely. I love her than it would ever happen for me. I wasn't sure that it would ever happen for me. I understand. I I went through an era of not being sure I'd be able to keep a job because I I could hold a job and do well yeah. with the work, but I couldn't get along with other humans for a time. So I'm sorry. I was having trouble getting hey. in. Oh, to this meeting. I'm sorry, I was having trouble getting into this meeting. Oh, that's absolutely fine. You're here with us now. I hope you can hear everything and uh, everything's working smoothly for you now. Okay, so the next question I'll direct at Stephanie and uh, Lance and Chris. If you'd like to follow up, please do so. Um, Stephanie, some folks might wonder about the specific link between mental health and AAC. Uh, what do you see as that link? I know I talked a little bit about that in the intro uh, because of the social isolation and the lack of inclusion that can happen. Belief that AAC communicator communicators are Vulnerable. To be. Abused. And. Neglect. Neglected. On. Because people think AAC communicator communicators are less than eight you. M. Human. I believe that AAC communicators are vulnerable to be abused and neglected because people think AAC communicators are less than human. I personally am. S. U. R. Beef. Survive. Survivor. Mm. From. Emotional. And. Abuse. 
as well as hateful. Emotionally. Physically. And. Medical. Medically. Neglects. Neglected. I personally am survivor from emotional and psychological abuse, as well as emotionally, physically, and medically neglected. For example, I did not. Go. Go. Dentist for over ten. Years old. And the are the as result of that was, for example, I did not go to the dentist over 10 years, and the result of that was R. E. M. O. B. Removing. E. Mm. Teeth. For example, I did not go to the dentist over 10 years, and the result of that was removing eight teeth. Mm. It is common AAC communicator communicators are. Ace. Such. Abuse. And. Neglect. It is common AAC communicators face such abuse and neglect. And. People with AAC needs don't go Psychotherapy. Of course. Because they are R E L Berlin 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 
Relay. On. Someone. To help. Them. And people with a seemingly don't go to psychotherapy because they are relying on someone to help them. It is. Very. Complex. Issue. I believe that AAC communicators are vulnerable to be abused and neglected because people think AAC communicators are less than human. I personally am survivor from emotional and psychological abuse, as well as emotionally, physically, and medically neglected. For example, I did not go to the dentist over 10 years, and the result of that was removing eight teeth. It is common AAC communicators face such abuse and neglect. And people with AAC needs don't go to psychotherapy because they are relying on someone to help them. It is a very complex issue. Boy, it is indeed. And I appreciate your insight and your giving an answer that addresses the issue from so many angles. Um, comment in the chat from Caitlin, our MSW intern. Uh, I agree, people often don't discuss the intersection of disability and mental health. I'm so glad it's being given a platform this evening and that we are learning about technologies that can help better the well being of those who could benefit from it. Um, thank you for that comment, Caitlin. And um, I know we had some, some difficulties. You didn't get the questions in advance. Um, so I did put them in the private chat. I'm just sharing this for our panelists' benefit. If you want to look at the chat for hosts and and panelists, then you can see what questions coming up and get a little bit of uh, advance notice on it. I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, yeah, a uh, little, little bit of lead time to to prepare your thoughts. Yeah. Um, and and again, um, Stephanie, I'm just that was just such a powerful answer. There was so much to it, and you very eloquently pulled together so many levels of vulnerability and so many things to think about. And it, it makes me think before there was any technology, then what did people do? Then they had no means of communicating. The health professional would look at the caregiver and assume that they were speaking on behalf of, of uh, the vulnerable person with, with a speech difficulty. So Wow, I'm glad at least things are improving, even if there's so much work to be done. Okay, uh, the next question we've got is for Lance. You wrote a blog post, which is excellent, by the way, called Erroneous Assumptions about some folks' reactions to your using AAC. I like the honesty of, of this line. You said, I might try to explain the fatigue it causes me to talk without AAC, but then I'm seeing as being too lazy to make the effort. As someone who lives with depression, I get that particular label. Um, lazy is what I'm referring to. Can you say more about that? Um, how was your mental health impacted by the stigma and ignorance surrounding ACC? Hi, hi. Recently, come up with a good analogy. I had recently come up with a good analogy. <clears throat> if I said that someone should not wear glasses because they can still see some without them would you think that was pretty absurd if i said that someone should not wear glasses because they can still see some without them wouldn't you think that was pretty absurd <laughs> absolutely People don't seem to be able to understand that hmm. okay. speech 
is on a spectrum and there is a lot in between. Speaking and not speaking. People don't seem to be able to understand that speech is on a spectrum and there is a lot in between speaking and not speaking. <coughs> I remember I went through some really dark time before I finally got a way to communicate. I was so angry and frustrated for a long time. I remember I went through some really dark times before I finally got a way to communicate. I was so angry and frustrated for a long time. I felt like a wild animal walking around in circle circles inside a cage slowly losing my mind I felt like a wild animal walking around in circles inside a cage, slowly losing my mind. Wow. Really strong, powerful analogies. Thank you for that. Um, and I can imagine how it would feel. I mean, for me, it doesn't take much for me to feel rejected. And if people don't make the effort to talk or start to avoid me because it's, you know, it's challenging, it's frustrating to have the conversation and not be understood um that would be very difficult yeah thank you for for your transparency i i know some of these things are difficult to share um all of you uh thank you for having the courage to be here and tell your stories all righty who's up next here um Chris, you're very involved with an organization called Impact Voices. Can you tell us about that? I love Impact Voices. I love their vision and mission because it's all about getting AAC communicators together. This is so important because AAC communicators don't get together a lot. So being able to get together with people who are going through the same things, maybe not everything the same, but not being able to communicate. People think you are useless. So getting together as a community is a huge part of Impact Voices. We are trying to help communities understand AAC better and hopefully allow people join in in their communities. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful mission. I, I'm struck by some of the, the feelings that are coming through. Um, Stephanie's comment of being perceived as less than human, um, feeling like a caged animal because of the frustration, um, feeling useless or being labeled as useless. It's, uh, I appreciate your giving us the chance to just to understand how it feels to, to walk in your shoes, so to speak. Um, it is difficult to be on the outside, whether it's an invisible injury or something that people can look at. Um, you know, we don't live in a real tolerant, warm and fuzzy society right now. I, I feel like we are making a lot of strides with education and understanding. Lots of folks are opening their hearts and learning about mental health and other 
challenges, other abilities and disabilities. Um, but it's it's wonderful to hear a perspective that is very eye opening to me. All righty. I say something about that. Can I say something about that? Of course. I believe we are making S T R I D stride strides. But I believe. Disabilities get left out up the conversation a lot. <coughs> Whether it's M E N mental health. Or another thing, disabilities need to become more up the conversation. I believe we are making strides. But I believe disabilities get left out of the conversation a lot, whether it's mental health or another thing. Disabilities need to become more of the conversation. Mm. I agree completely. Um, whether it's community planning or Medicaid expansion or, you know, looking at the law um, it is required for insurance companies to cover mental health conditions, behavioral health in the same way as they do physical insurance parity is the law, but is it in place? Is it, is it really that way? Not so much. Um, it's yeah, there's kind of the law and then there's the reality of it. And, and yeah, we do need to carve out space in conversations because if we feel invisible and powerless, you know, what does that do to our mental health? And what does that do to <laughs> our place in the world? It just keeps shrinking. So yeah. that's why we're here tonight. All righty. Um, is there more? Um, I don't understand why my <laughs> name is not up. Um, I don't understand why my name is not up. What is your name? I, I don't My know. My name is Jennifer Lowe. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, are you a panelist? I, I usually know who's coming in advance. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you'd like I to. I was. Me. I'm sorry. Having. Issues. Getting into the meeting. I was having issues getting into the meeting. I was. Uh, I'm glad you're here now, Jennifer, but I don't know your name and I didn't know you were coming. So if you want to spell your name for me, I can change it. Sure. Jennifer. J E N N 
I F E R. Jennifer. Yes. Low. L O W E. Low. All right, Jennifer. Like. R O B Rob. Did I get it right? Low. Yes. Would you like you to? You did. Good, good. So now we know you're Jennifer and not Chris Klein uh, or an imposter. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself, Jennifer? Yes. My name is Jennifer Lowe. When I heard that there would be a mental health Zoom meeting from Jackie, I just knew that I had to participate. Mental health is widely heard of in these days. We hear about it in the news. We read about it on the internet. And we hear about it on the radio. John Fetterman, the Senator John from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, recently was released from the hospital for depression. Mental health issues run in my family, too. I have an uncle with agoraphobia. I have at least two cousins who are bipolar, who I'm close with. The pandemic has been blamed for the increase of mental health issues. Just. Because. A person. Is. Speaking with an augmentative, hopefully, communication device. doesn't mean they don't get depressed or struggle M E N Mental Mentally Period Just because a person is speaking with an augmentative communication device doesn't mean they don't get depressed or struggle mentally. Of course. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm glad you're here. It's a, a wonderful surprise and uh, it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage because I prepared questions. Um, uh, is there anything else you'd I like have. to say, Jennifer? A. Um, this is kind of
embarrassing, not embarrassing, but frustrating and sad. Um, this is kind of embarrassing, not embarrassing, but frustrating and sad, period. I apologize for the uh, confusion. I... Go ahead. Have. Felt like I want E D wanted to go into A M E N Mental F A C facility, but I need so much care. That wasn't an option. I have felt like I wanted to go into a mental facility, but I need so much care. That wasn't an option. I'm so sorry that. That's a vulnerable place to be and a frustrating and disappointing place to be. Are you talking about medical care or the more about your mental health diagnosis or just you felt you wouldn't be heard? I'm significantly involved. I'm significantly involved and and I don't think A F A C I L I facility would have I'm significantly involved and I don't think a facility would have help. I need someone to put me 
in my chair. I need someone to put my device in front of me. Me. I need someone to help me to eat and to go to the bathroom. Mm. Not to mention to charge my communication. device I'm significantly involved and I don't think a facility would have help I need someone to put me in my chair I need someone to put my device in front of me I need someone to help me to eat and to go to the bathroom not to mention to charge my communication device okay. so I can talk we talk. need to figure out how people with disabilities could E N T E R Enter a F A C I L I T Y facility and B Q U O T E quote independent we need to figure out how people with disabilities could enter a facility and be quote independent that's a lot that's a lot jennifer um I appreciate your being so transparent and courageous to share your experience and to share all of that. Um, and you're right, there aren't, it, it would be a real search. You would have to have some advance notice and probably do a search and be willing to drive a distance or travel to a facility that would have the capacity and, and the ability to meet different needs on those levels. Stephanie, do you have any insights for us? I was 
No. Realized how would someone with personal care needs. to be and I and P inpatient psychiatric client clients But makes a lot of sense that the mm. teeth Psychiatry, psychiatric, hospital, hospitals, or D, D, P. Department don't know how to meet there. Personal care needs. I've not realized how if someone with personal care needs to be an inpatient psychiatric client it makes a lot of sense that the psychiatric hospitals or department don't know how to meet their personal care needs. I went on and T. And intense, intensive of you, T, T, outpatient. Program the virtual, virtually staff which was kind of accessible. Because I have support staff at home. I went to intensive outpatient program virtually, which was kind of accessible because I have support staff at home. Wondering if
it is accessible of for people with personal care needs to go to R T I Partial date of hospital hospitalization. I've not realized how when someone with personal care needs to be an inpatient psychiatric client makes a lot of sense that the psychiatric hospitals or department don't know how to meet their personal care needs. I went to intensive outpatient program virtually, which was kind of accessible because I have support staff at home. Wondering if it is accessible for people with personal care needs to go to partial hospitalization. Mm -hmm. As someone who's led NAMI support groups for folks who have mental health challenges for a number of years, I, I tend to hear good reviews for partial hospitalization and trauma uh, or, or not great reviews for inpatient care. That's very anecdotal evidence, I realize, but it seems to come through in our helpline as well, which uh, fields 2,000 contacts a year from people across North Carolina. So that, that definitely sounds like a good solution, Stephanie. May I? Provide more insight to my situation. May I provide more insight to my situation? Why don't we spend maybe two more minutes on this and uh, and then we could move on to some of our, our other questions. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. I think oh. part oh. of my An issue, issue is I'm in M E N A P A U S E menopause and my parents are getting older period my step dad has Frontal lobe non fluent primary progressive aphasia and 
I think part. My. Mom is. Struggling to take care of us. She is. She is. Seven, one, I think part of my issue is I'm in menopause and my parents are getting older. My stepdad has frontal lobe non-fluent primary progressive aphasia and my mom is struggling to take care of us. She is 71. I want... to help but my mind is s h u t t i n g shutting d O, W, N. I want to help, but my mind is shutting down. I don't know if it's another a part of Long T E R M term C O V I D COVID. I don't know if it's a part mm -hmm. of long term COVID. Okay. So, Jennifer, can I, I need to go soon? What time will this end? I need to go soon. What time will this end? Uh, we usually end at 830. Are you? It sounds like you could use uh, some help from our helpline. If you're in North Carolina, we have a wonderful helpline through NAMI North Carolina. Uh, there's also a national NAMI helpline. You've shared a lot of concerns and I can tell that you're uh, you've got a very full plate, a lot of stressors on you, and I think that a, a NAMI helpline would be a very good resource to help you uh, access the care that you need, have someone to talk to, and maybe help you come up with a plan of action to address some of these issues, because it is quite a lot that you've shared with us that you're dealing with. Did it. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. I see that you're a, um, on the board of AAC United. Uh, so it's been wonderful to have you with us. Uh, a very pleasant surprise for me. And um, it's wonderful to meet you. And I, I hope that you're able to get some resources and support because it is a lot that you're managing there. Um, so we normally do a video of the week. We're, we're already at 815. So I think we're going to skip that particular part of the show. Um, I, I guess I'd like to ask is, is there anyone who has a, a thought or follow up to the some of the items we've been discussing? A lot of stuff has been shared. I don't want to just immediately pivot to a different question. 
Uh, Lance, Stephanie, Chris, do you have any thoughts in response to all of this that have come to your mind? If not, that's fine. Just, yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks. Want... Go ahead. You and D. If R S underscore and T is if the I am T importance of psychotherapy. I want to underscore the importance of psychotherapy. I want to underscore the importance of psychotherapy. I absolutely agree, Stephanie. I've benefited a great deal from uh, different types of trauma treatment, eye movement, desensitization and reprocessing. Um, it's a great one. I, I think I'm seeing some enthusiasm on your part if I'm reading your <laughs> your nonverbals correctly. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical. There are just so many helpful tools out there. M D R M D R D D B B T T And R my loves the MDR and DDT are my loves. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, very uplifting comment from Jackie Pilgrim. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tonight's conversation. Thank you for being here, Jackie. Lance, did you have a comment or Chris? Hmm. Lance, do you want to go first? Lance, do you want to go first? <laughs> I don't think I have anything to say. Right now, I don't think I have anything to say right now. I believe we need to have more C H K conversation conversations like. These because <laughs> just there is so <laughs> by much work we need to do and everybody needs help so figuring out how to do that is important and I really believe it's time to stop S E P separate separating 
s at 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 outer cells into different groups i know we do that a lot i don't believe it is helping and i don't believe it is helping us find our true i d e identity and i could say a lot more but i don't stop there i believe we need to have more conversations like these because there is so much work we need to do and everybody needs help so figuring out how to do that is important and i really believe it's time to stop separating ourselves into different groups i know we do that a lot i don't believe it is helping and i don't believe it is helping us find our true identity and i could say a lot more but i'll stop there <laughs> mm. that's a really interesting interesting point chris that we like to withdraw into smaller groups homogenous groups maybe people who speak our language and understand us immediately yeah yeah and uh you know they i i'm thinking of your masters in divinity and and some spiritual paths talk about how we need to be in relationship with others to have spiritual growth or emotional growth uh, and of course at nami if you're an atheist or a buddhist or a christian or a muslim we're good with all that whatever works for you in your recovery we're all about that um, but, but the, there is a philosophy that says we, we really need to connect with other people to find that identity and to find a way forward out of the darkness and, uh, into becoming ourselves, remembering our true selves, you might say. So thank yeah. you for that. Okay, fair enough. We've Spiritual. Got Health. And mental health are I and T C R C both and interconnected spiritual health and mental health are interconnected. Hmm. Great point, Stephanie. Thank you. We've got just five or six minutes left to the show. Um, if you all would like to make a final statement or uh, perhaps what gives you hope, that's oftentimes our final question. Uh, and briefly, I'll make some announcements. Please fill out the survey that you see when you leave the Zoom program uh, a survey will magically appear it helps us improve over time and it helps us wonders what we do and uh also please join us next week we'll be talking about rural mental health with dr brenda mack a leading authority she's fabulous uh, she's a professional professor of social work at bemidji state university in minnesota uh also our nami walk whoever you are wherever you are you can join us uh, support us, volunteer at our NAM, NAMI walk on May 20th. Uh, we'll be at Perimeter Park in Morrisville, and we would love to see you there. Um, so Lance, we haven't heard from you in a while. Do you have any closing thoughts?
I would say that I personally understand how difficult it can be to keep going and there has been lots of time when I felt like yeah. giving up. Yeah. I would say that I personally understand how difficult it can be to keep going and there has been lots of time when I felt like giving up. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes all you can do is yeah. keep holding on until the next second or minute but if you keep going there is a way out of whatever you are going through Sometimes all you can do is keep holding on until the next second or minute, but if you keep going, there is a way out of whatever you are going through. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been there too, Lance. Thank you. My comments were meant to make you think. Uh, your comments were meant to make us think. I, I appreciate that. I'm not sure which comments you're referring to exactly. Um, the, I want to say psychotherapy is an essential to life. Anyone can see a mental health counselor. One. She was too small. About the F A C facility and being significantly disabled. The one about the facility and being significantly disabled. No. Stephanie, I like your comment. Stephanie, I like your comment. Thank you, Jennifer. I do believe you made a, a really important point about having facilities available to help people with more complex needs, both physical and emotional or psychiatric. Um, Stephanie, I think I missed your last comment. I was hoping you could repeat it. I want to say psychotherapy is an essential to life. Anyone can see a mental health counselor. No issue is too small. Understood. And I agree completely. Thank you for that. Hey, to build off Lance. I always tell people the spirit within you is stronger than what's in front of you. Yeah. That's a beautiful comment, Chris. I think that's a wonderful note to end on. We are at 829. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thanks to all of you for your courage and your eloquence in sharing your experience with us and your insights. Um, it's been very eye-opening and I appreciate each of you being here tonight. If you're out there feeling alone, feeling like no one hears your voice or is listening carefully, please give us a call at NAMI. Please reach out to us. We'd like to be there for you and help you connect with resources, perhaps help you find your tribe. NAMI's made a big difference for me and I think it can make a difference for you too. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful night. All right.